Welcome to Jerry Tips this week. We'll be discussing hypertension. I will be discussing this at the second installment in our series of seven presentations on the cardiovascular system. And I will go through the rest of the episodes in, uh, in terms of what, what to look forward to in the next five weeks and what we've done thus far. Then we will also review the outline for the presentation and uh, take it from there. So thank you for showing up today. Uh, we'll be discussing hypertension. Last week we discussed changes with age of the cardiovascular system. Next week, God's will, we'll be discussing coronary artery disease and heart failure, atrial fibrillation, peripheral vascular disease, and valvular heart disease. So the outline is as follows. We'll be discussing hypertension, the facts, stats, trivia of hypertension. We'll be going to hypertension again. And then we'll be discussing what causes hypertension, what makes it so dangerous, symptoms, signs, and diagnosis, tips on treatment, prevention, and reversal of hypertension. And then we'll be discussing myths about the salt about salt and the salty six and then we're discussing some resources and that you could read beyond this presentation all right so uh the truth is is 65 percent of non-institutionalized adults above the age of 60 have hypertension in the u.s uh, while treating hypertension is beneficial in reducing the risk of stroke heart failure heart attack cardiovascular disease and death and this is also from the american geriatric society uh, it wasn't until the death of franklin d roosevelt that the impacts of untreated hypertension gained public attention there were documented severe elevations in president roosevelt's blood pressure during the course of his presidency and unfortunately it's believed that he died from a complication of his hypertension and thankfully since then the science of hypertension and, and its treatment um, has evolved significantly so that nowadays there are more treatment options for hypertension compared to uh, president roosevelt's time so uh, that's the trivia fact for today so what is hypertension and what i would say is that hypertension is high blood pressure um, causing the force of blood pushing against the wall of blood vessels to be too high. Uh, and, and this is a, a definition from the American Heart Association. Uh, unfortunately, with age, our arteries stiffen and the walls of the arteries become more resistant to the flow of blood. So the heart has to pump harder to get blood through the arteries so that the blood is able to get to the tissues of the body. So that puts extra strain on the heart. So the heart becomes thicker and it becomes larger. And the issue is it, 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 it takes more work for it to relax. So what happens is that uh, as the heart continues to work hard and work harder, eventually the heart um, is at increased risk of failing and that can cause you to have shortness of breath, leg swelling, and other problems. So that's the heart, the pump. The increased pressure puts pressure on the pump. The increased pressure also puts pressure on the pipes as well. So the walls of the arteries become damaged, and then there's an increased risk of the position of cholesterol plaques that can reduce the flow of blood and that can ultimately cause heart attacks and stroke and other diseases and also in some cases some of these arteries can rupture and bleed um, in the case of uh, medical conditions such as uh, aortic dissection and um, even i believe you know a ruptured you know aneurysm um, can get even worse i mean an aneurysm is an abnormal dilatation of an artery so you can you imagine if you have high blood pressure that can increase the risk of that artery rupturing so that's hypertension um, in a nutshell uh, in terms of what causes hypertension in many cases the cause is uncertain what we do know is that the 
uh, the risk of hypertension increases with age, obesity, family history, race, the black race has more prevalence of hypertension and there's an increased risk of complication of hypertension and the complications tend to be more severe in black people as well. A history of kidney disease can increase your risk of hypertension, high sodium or high salt diets can cause or can increase the risk of hypertension, excessive alcohol intake and physical inactivity can all increase the risk of hypertension. Uh, and then medications, a number of medications can also cause hypertension as well. And the list of some of these medications um, is here on this slide. So why is hypertension so dangerous? Hypertension is dangerous because it's silent and deadly. Uh, it, it increases the work that the heart must do to get blood around the body. And then as mentioned before, it damages the inner lining of the wall. And then as I mentioned before, the cholesterol plaques can form more easily. Uh, so you don't want your blood pressure to be high like, like in, this, in this illustration here. So uh, the, the another reason why hypertension is so dangerous is because it's silent. By the time you see symptoms, it's probably too late. And what I mean is by the time you, the first symptom might be a stroke or the first symptom might be heart failure. And almost all arteries and organs are affected by hypertension because all of the arteries are connected. It's like a network. So if, it's, if there's high blood pressure, for the most part, if there's high blood pressure in one artery, it's highly likely that there's high blood pressure in, in most of the other arteries. And then by the time you have damage to these arteries and to the heart, the damage is irreversible. And uh, hypertension that's not controlled can cause you to have cognitive decline, memory loss, heart attack, stroke, heart failure, kidney failure, erectile dysfunction, blindness, death, all from a silent disease. So uh, I have tips on, on how to detect this disease early. Uh, so what are the symptoms and signs of hypertension? Again, oftentimes none. Oftentimes, persons with hypertension are walking around with no symptoms, and that's why it's called a silent killer. How is hypertension diagnosed? Uh, the three blood pressure readings above 130 over 80 in the doctor's office. And this is when the blood is taken, when the person relaxed, uh, you know, no recent smoking, no recent caffeine intake, feet flat on the floor, uh, no talking. If the blood pressure is still elevated when these things are done on three um, separate occasions, the person probably has hypertension. Or if you have consecutive readings of 160 over 100, that's probably suggestive of that person having hypertension. Or um, if you have significantly elevated high blood pressure like you you have a one-time high blood pressure of 180 over 100 it probably means that you have hypertension or if you have a history of um, a high blood pressure in the presence of a stroke or kidney disease or evidence of heart enlargement or heart attack that probably suggests that you you've had a history or you do have a history of high blood pressure special circumstances your blood pressure might be normal at home, but then for some reason, when you get to the doctor's office, the blood pressure goes up. That's called white, white, coat, white coat hypertension, and your doctor will help you to manage that. Also, your blood pressure might be normal in the office, but there's evidence of uh, heart failure or heart disease or heart enlargement or kidney disease or, or um, high blood pressure affecting the eyes that is called mask hypertension which means that even though your blood pressure is normal in the office when you're outside of the office or when you're at home your blood pressure is elevated but no one is detecting it so tips on treatment prevention and reversal of hypertension all right so we're getting into the meat of this presentation one start checking your blood pressure from an early age the, the, there are sources that recommend the age of 18 
I recommend from in your teens, check your blood pressure at least once a year. If the blood pressure is found to be abnormal, check the blood pressure more frequently. Maybe invest in a home blood pressure cuff also because you want to keep an eye on hypertension. You don't want to have it too long without it being treated because the longer it goes untreated, the more damage that takes place. Now, if, if you are found to have hypertension, try to find a primary care physician or a general practitioner early. Develop a relationship because you're going to have to keep that relationship consistent because he or she will be the one to treat and monitor your blood pressure um, over the course of, of, of your relationship with that physician. And when, when that physician sees you, he or she will probably prescribe medications. Now, I'm big on natural medicine, uh, lifestyle medicine. However, the blood pressure medicines can quickly get your blood pressure under control. The lifestyle stuff may take some time, may take weeks to months to get your blood pressure to where it needs to be. But um, sometimes it, it will be too dangerous to wait that long to get your blood pressure controlled. So in, invest in or consider taking medications as prescribed by your physician. And the good thing is that there are different categories of medic, blood pressure medications. <clears throat> and each category has its own set of side effects that you can so if one type of medication for blood pressure causes a side effect you could always switch to another one so there are options if if you know for whatever reason you've had a, a side effect to one particular blood pressure medicine but the goal is to keep that blood pressure as 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 stable as possible you want to aim for a blood pressure of 130 over 80 and below um, <clears throat> as long as the blood pressure is above 90 over 60 less than 130 over 80 and you're not getting any dizziness or lightheadedness or any increased falls or anything it's probably a good blood pressure um, then when you do have side effects please tell your physician because again your physician is able or should be able to find another blood pressure medication that won't cause you to have side effects uh, in terms of further tips stand and walk more sitting for a long time can cause you to have an increase in your blood pressure with time consider a whole food plant-based diet that means a plant-based diet that consists of food in its most natural form with as little processing as possible also avoid processed foods that helps Find effective coping mechanisms for stress as stress that's not managed well can also contribute to high blood pressure. And also reducing salt to less than 2 grams per day can help in managing your blood pressure. Now, the final two slides are from the American Heart Association. I'm sorry, I uh, got a little bit of itchiness on the throat there. So, the, the the first slide is on the seven salty myths busted the first myth is eliminating sodium completely is for good health the truth is that the body actually needs a little bit of salt to do the things that it needs to do so we still need salt second myth sea salt has less sodium than table salt Sea salt is actually very popular, but it usually isn't any less salty. Just like table salt, it typically, typically contains 40% of sodium. Next, I usually don't salt my food, so I don't eat too much sodium. The truth is, about 71% of sodium in America is actually from food that is processed and from restaurant foods, not the salt shaker. And that's why it's so important to compare nutrition fat labels and serving sizes. Just reading straight from the, the flyer there. But the truth is, even when you do your best in not adding salt, the food that we have, that we purchase in the grocery store or that we buy at restaurants actually probably have a lot of salt. A myth, high levels of sodium are only found in food. Some over-the-counter medications contain high levels of sodium. Read drug labels carefully. 
and remember that some companies produce low sodium over the counter products so it may not be sodium chloride it may be sodium carbonate or sodium bentonate uh you name it if it has sodium it, it has salt and that all of the, that sodium can increase your blood pressure myth the lower sodium foods have no taste listen there's a rich world of creative and flavorful alternatives to salt experiment with spices herbs and citrus to enhance the natural flavor of your food and made my blood pressure is normal so i don't need to worry about um, the sodium i eat the american heart association recommends no more than 2300 milligrams of sodium per day i'm moving towards an ideal limit of no more than 1500 milligrams per day for most adults even cutting back by a thousand milligrams a day can help improve your blood pressure and heart health and the last myth is i don't eat a lot of solid food i don't eat too much sodium sodium is found in almost all foods including mixed dishes such as sandwiches burgers tacos rice pasta grain dishes pizza meat poultry seafood dishes and soups using nutrition facts label to choose food with the least sodium and the salty six beware of these six foods beware all right i'm just saying beware breads and rolls some breads and some rolls may be high in sodium pizza 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 tends to be high in sodium watch out for those sandwiches uh it could be a burger it could just be a regular sandwich they can actually have uh, um, very high levels of salt. Beware of cold cuts and cured meat. Sorry for the typo there. Um, canned soups can be high in sodium. And burritos and tacos can be high in sodium. So just beware of these culprits. Uh, so for further information, I feel free to reach out to... Yeah, I mean, well, feel free to log on to the following websites healthinaging.org, uh, the CDC as well, the American Heart Association, and the National Institutes of Aging. So, in summary, hypertension is a silent disease, but it's a silent killer. Check your blood pressure as soon as you hit the age of 18 or sooner, and check it once yearly. If, they, if it's found to be elevated, go to a physician right away and choose that physician that would follow you over the course of years because if you have hypertension, you're in it for the long haul. But uh, med medications are available and medication may be the best bet in getting your blood pressure to a safe level as you work on lifestyle. And um, lifestyle includes... Uh, diet that contains uh, consists of whole foods a plant-based diet <clears throat> low in sodium and also it consists of regular exercise 30 minutes a day at least five days a week and uh, review your medications with your physician some of those medications may be contributing to your hypertension and consider visiting these resources for further information and that's it Thank you for supporting Jerry Tips, my friends, and uh, I see you next week. Uh, in between our episodes, we're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and as you know, we're on YouTube. Thank you for your time, and uh, see you next week. Bye bye. <music>